Welcome everyone to uh, our second class for MP buffer files. Uh, today we'll be um, finishing up our class on buffers and we're going to be continuing uh, with what we what we were working on uh, at the end of last Saturday's class, which is adding G10 output to a post to handle uh, both work offset and tool information. So, this is what we had for our buffer. And last class we got finished um, adding the G10 information for work offsets. So what we're doing is capturing the locations of our work offset values from within Mastercam. We are then writing that data to a buffer um, during the pre-read NCI loop. So during PWRTT, we are capturing this data. We are then at the top of our program, and we actually can't do it in pheader, we have to do it in, in uh, PSOF. We are sorting and outputting the data uh, at that point. So, let's take a look at this. First thing that happens during uh, the sequence of events for posting. The first thing that happens is during our pre-read loop, we have two options here. If use G10 WCS equals yes, we are going to write the buffer. So P G10 WCS write buff. If use G10 TL OFF equals yes. So if you use the G10 tool offsets, equals yes uh, PG 10 tool offset write buff so this is where we're actually writing the data to our buffer let's go ahead and look at the G 10 WCS so this post block you know as we talked about last class is called from PWRTT and only if that switch is turned on this post block is designed to write out the WCS and tool origin information. It says WCS and tool origin. Uh, the reality is that when we talk about WCS here, this really is work offset number. It's not really the WCS uh, in the way that we normally think of the WCS in MasterCAM. I thought it, it might, it's probably important for us to make that distinction. And the tool origin, so that is the work offset origin information to the preload buffer. This is all about the work offset. Now, one of the things that you need to be aware of when we did this whole example, we're setting up the origins of these tool planes uh, all relative to top view. Okay, right now we're only using a top tool and construction plane, uh, and we happen to have multiple planes with different or multiple top planes with different origins and that's all we're handling right now when you start getting into um, four and five axis programming with the tool planes there's something that you got to be aware of so let's let's go ahead and save this We're going to save this as example number two. And this is going to be um, tool 
tool plane origin. And we're going to move this to a different level, turn off the geometry, and uh, turn off the toolpaths. And let's go ahead and add a second machine group. So we're going to add a second machine group that uses um, just a MP fan or mill, uh, mill default post here. And let's take a look at something. Um, I'm going to look at this in the right view and we're going to set planes equal to the right side. And I'm going to do create a rectangular shape. Okay. And we're going to do solids, extrude. Let's make this 12 inches long. So. I want you to think about a vertical machine. Let's make this eight. And let's say that we've got this on a vertical machining center with a rotary fourth axis. And that fourth axis is an A, and so I've represented that here um, by this eight inch diameter um, cylinder. So this is gonna be the face of our rotary, and we're gonna say that we've got our machine origin set right now, or we can think of it as our base work offset, set to the center of rotation for this part. Oh, I can't hit F9 because that interferes with uh, with my recording, but the center of the x-axis would pass through the center of this block. And let's say that this, that we actually have different stations set up, right? So from the top, this is going to be um, our G54 or our G55. Maybe we're using G54 for the center of rotation. So G55, 56, 57, 58. We can actually have uh, Mastercam calculate and output the values um, of our work offsets. So let's let's create some uh, some locations on here that we can use to measure this. So what I'm going to do? Oop, let's go back to the top plane. I'm going to create a two inch diameter circle and we're going to use these circles or I should say the center points of these circles as the origins and we're going to go front plane So I want one going across this way. There we go. Okay. And we want one more from the top. Okay. So right now, I've got these four circles, okay? Let's go, I'm in the top plane. I'm gonna move this one just slightly. Okay. 
Okay. So we're going to move that one just slightly. Oops. Let's get, uh, get the original group. Get rid of that. All right. And then uh, this one. Let's move that one slightly. So I'm just doing this. group get rid of that and clear that okay when we go and we set up these planes it's important for fourth axis rotary work and five axis as well to make sure that um, the orientation of our plane rotates around one fixed axis so in this case we want to rotate around x so what i'll do is open up my view manager and we're going to make a copy of top again and i'll call this one Ooh. Ooh. hold on we're going to call this one uh, g54 Point one, P one. And we're gonna set the work offset number to six for um, that particular plane. Front, the orientation is correct for what we wanna do. So I can make a copy of front and I can call this uh, GE 54.1 P two. And that means that we're going to want to set work offset number seven. And bottom doesn't really work for us. So what I'm going to do is use top and we're going to do X form rotate. So or excuse me, not X form rotate, planes rotate. So I'll do planes, rotate planes. Here it shows us the plane. And if we go about X, 180 degrees, that will give us a bottom tool plane that has the X axis pointing towards the right, which is what we need. The default bottom does not work for us. So we'll say OK. And this is going to be G54.1 uh, P3, I think. Next one in our list. And finally, planes top. Oop. Planes rotate. We're going to go 270. And that gives us a back view, which is also oriented correctly. So we're going to call that P4. Now, if I go. Let me make sure I fix these real quick. This, so this is number eight. Oh, six. That should be number seven. Oh, hold on. So this should be number eight. And this should be number nine. Okay. Now... There we go. When I start clicking on these to look at the orientation, not only can we see the orientation, we can see the origin location be moving around. So what I'll do is select G54.1P1. We can see, or we could see the uh, our view over there. The, slide that down a little bit. And what I'll do for G54.1P1 is use my um, select the new origin button to grab the center point. Now, I'll just do this and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so I'll grab uh, G54.1P2. That's going to be our front circle. G54.1P3 
is going to be our bottom circle and the P4 is our back circle. Okay, so we're going to save that part file. Um, I'm going to go planes top. I'm going to translate this guy. We're going to set it to move, which I don't think I did last time. Oh, I need a new keyboard. I think uh, I think some of my keys are sticky, so it's like jumping around. Okay, we're gonna move it up in Z. We're gonna take that one. We're gonna translate it a little bit in X and Y. And let's go that guy a little bit. Um, okay. So we've got these positions now slightly moved around. And if we look at this in the origin there, we'll see these origin values. And everything looks great. Now, here's the real issue. If we're in the top plane, and this is our kind of base work offset here, and we go and measure, so create, actually I'll do it as a line, an actual physical line so we can get back here easier um, in the future. And I go from my origin here, and we go to the center point of that circle. And then I do the other thing, so it's the same thing I should say, and I come from this origin point, and I come to the center of the circle over there. If we look at this circle here, and I do F4, we can get its origin, you know, relative to the current construction plane. So X, it's uh, almost six inches. Z, it's two inches up. And if I click this one over here, this is on that front plane, we can see that the X 6.0003, Y is negative three, Z is zero. So these are the values that we would essentially want to come out for that work offset on the front plane. Okay, let me do this, let me We take a snip of that. Okay, because we're going to have to close this. And if I go look at our view manager, that would be this guy. G54.1P2. So who can tell me what's wrong with this picture? I know there's only two of us. <laughs> two guys in the class at the, at the moment. So Craig, Bill, um, between the two of you guys, 
Um, does anybody see the difference between the X, Y, and Z values? Yeah, I can see where, where you shifted them. What's going but, on uh, is that every time you create a plane and you pick an origin for that plane, these origin values are always relative to the orientation of the plane itself. Yes. They are not relative to your WCS. So when we are specifying these G10 values for a part like this, we need to specify these origins in relationship to the system top view or what we can think of as our machine view and we could write some really complicated logic to do that for us or we can let MP do the heavy lifting. This right here is where we're capturing our tool plane origin values. And right now we're capturing the values uh, that are supplied to us from this dialog box. Which means all of these values are relative um, to the orientation of the actual plane itself. Which is bad. Which is not what we want. We actually want them relative to, um, to the top, basically. So, what we can do there... Let me just post this out real quick. Um, actually, we need some ops. So, let's do that. Let's do... Uh, We're going to do construction and tool plane for G54.1 uh, P1. We'll do uh, tool paths contour. And we'll just make sure the only thing that really that I really care about at the moment, yeah, making sure that these values are here, work offset is set. Everything else is good. Uh, I'm going to choose planes. We're going to go P2. We're going to do the same thing. So I'll do another contour. Okay. Another contour. Um, just make sure that the planes, yep, set to P2. Planes named views, P3, same process. Toolpaths contour. Uh, I think we need to reverse it. And change that. Okay. So again, that's coming from. G fifty four point one P three. Gonna now go to P four and do our final contour. And let's reverse that, yes. Okay. So let's post that. And we can see for our G10 offset values, let me, let me do this, um, that basically it's just printing them out. 
6.0003 z3 inches um, 6.0004 minus 0002 z2 inches etc okay now we have an option in mastercam to grab the x y and z values of the tool plane origin already mapped back to the system top view so what we're going to do here for the last three values in our array let me uh, remove all bookmarks i'm going to set a new bookmark there and we're going to go up to our switch variables and um we're going to do this. This is all about um, G10. Actually, I don't want it right before. I want it right after the use G10. So, so there's use. Actually, there's use. There's sort. And there is, we're going to call this uh, something about the tool origins. Um, let's see. How about use? Something like use mapped origins. Um, how about just map origins? I'm trying to think of a good. Uh, a good variable name here we're just going to say map g10 Okay. Use mapped origins, map G10. We're going to say uh, if map underscore G10 and I'm going to create a post block, an implied post block and we're going to say else So we're either going to use mapped origins or we're not. And to do mapped origins, we're going to go TOX2 equals TOY2, and I'll show you the variables in a second, TOZ2. Uh, we got a question from Craig. Hey, Craig, uh, go ahead. You said the switch will give you choice to map top or use the actual position. Yeah, this this is all about mapping the origin of the tool plane to be relative to either the top view or relative to the tool plane itself. Okay. We have some predefined variables. If you look at TOX, TOY, and TOZ, and you just add the number four after, or, or right, bef right uh, in front of the dollar sign, that is the secret variable that is already mapped. 
So if our map G10 is turned on, we're going to write the TOX, TOY, and TOZ4 variables. If that switch is not turned on the map, we're just going to write the standard variables themselves. Okay. okay. So with map G10 turned on, here is our old output. Let's do a save as... Um, save that with old on there so that we can keep it and so now by just changing that to use um, the TOX, TOY and TOZ4 variables we should get this this let's close that out and um, we have a we don't have a vertical oh that's lame no oh. hmm well that didn't give us what we want that didn't give us what we want at all So let's go look at uh let's go look at that, figure out what went wrong here. So that should have been okay so if we go look at rotary processing The sub, let's see. Oh, you know what else we need to check in here? Uh, we need to check the like the rotary axis position settings. Let's go. Uh, Yeah, so Rodax type should be set to one. Let's see if there's anything else that's influencing that. Yeah, single axis rotation. We're going clockwise about X. So there's something in here, I remember seeing, that talked about um, using this option. So let's, let's the matrices. Huh, I'm really surprised this isn't. Uh, I know there's something that had more info on the uh, on the TOX, TOY, and TOZ stuff. 
I wonder if it's just not calculated during the pre-read. X4, Y4, Z4, yeah. Well, I may be going too far down the rabbit hole with this one. So, all right, I'll 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 do some work on this and we'll, uh, we can come back to this during an office hours. It's probably the best plan there. Since we're not actually getting those values calculated. All right. Um, so what I think we should do next is work on adding our uh, additional G10 lines to output tool data. Now, is that something that would be useful to you guys? Is that something you guys are wanting to do with G10? It would be a good information to know. Okay. Just the same as... Uh, the, the work offset. I mean, that's good information to know. Sure. So we've got this line of code that we've added PWRTT. If use G10 TL OFF equals yes. Now we're making a call to PG10 tool off right buffer. Okay. So, oop. Do control F. And this is where we've got our post block for loading the tool offsets. So what we were doing before was looking um, at our version 9 buffer. So let's go back in and look at this. G10 buffer. And here is our um, version 9 example. Now, in this case, yeah. Yeah, all the rest of that's for two. So, We're going to have um, a third buffer that we're adding to this post. And we're going to use that to capture uh, the G10 tool offsets. So this is, uh, and it says, this section is designed to allow the user to output the many different G10 L10 through L13 tool offset settings for preload and cancel. By default, the L12 is supported, but can be replaced or additional L output can be added. Additional variable data can be written to the buffer and extracted from it. If you do not know how to use buffers, please contact your Mastercam dealer or CNC Software's post department. Okay. Now, in this case, it looks like we're only storing one value by default. We have two different variables that we're working with, um, offset 3 and then offset n. So that's the next variable definition. Sort the work offsets. Let's see, that's all. Okay. So, what I'm going to do is copy all the stuff for... Um, actually, I'm going to do this in two sections. Sorry. We're going to grab the definition. 
and we're going to go copy that in. So let's go back to MP fan here. And let's find our buffer definition. So I'll search for fbuff. Um, here's buffer one. Here's buffer two. Paste that in there. Okay, so this is our third buffer definition. Section is designed to allow the user to output the many different options. WC3, RC3, size 3, 110. So we always initialize the read and the write counters to 1, like we've done here. And then size 3, that's the variable that we'll use to get our size. We have a format assignment that we need to handle. So this is really going to be... Um, a string so we're going to make that fmtp format statement number four means this is formatted for integer which is probably correct so we'll just leave that and then the value that we're dealing with for output is offset three that's the variable name we have also initialized offset n which we're going to use for the next variable in our loop and then we need f buff it's buffer number three. We're actually going to tell it we do want to keep it. There is one variable that we're storing in our buffer. And we're going to tell it that it is a real number buffer and not a string buffer. This is the initialization flag and we're not going to initialize this from anything. So that is our buffer definition. I mean, this is about the simplest buffer you can get. It holds one number value. If we go back here, after that buffer definition, now we've got a couple of different post blocks. we have PG10 tool off right buffer. This post block here is used to write data to our buffer. This is the sort routine. So much like we had for sorting uh, the work offsets, here we're gonna go and sort uh, the tool data. And finally, we have the output. This is the output post block. So let's go ahead and copy those blocks. And we're going to go paste them in. Okay, and here's our buffer two stuff. Boom, 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 boom. So here's where I'm going to paste in uh, our other buffers. So let's go. Okay, so this is where we're going to have our buffer 3 data.
Oop, I just put this in the wrong spot. Just this. So it'll cut. Sorry, I was like, confused for a second. I was like, hey, where'd that go? Alright, so we want this right there. Okay, so we've got one, we've got two, and we've got three post blocks. Okay, now in the next section, we're going to go through here and we're going to do the configuration. But I think uh, this is actually a good time to pause for um, our first break for the class. So before we go on break, do we have any questions about where we're at? Um, up to now or uh, you know anything from last class feel free to raise your hand or uh, you know type in a message there if you've got anything um, you good Craig's good okay no questions awesome all right well let's go ahead and take a break guys um, let's go ahead and break till about let's go ahead and take a 10 minute break so um, Okay, so we're on a 10 minute break and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. I need to uh, split this video.